experience of The Void. Hey, Christina, welcome to The Void. Tonight's episode is dedicated to legendary pranks initiated by legendary musicians. We start from the top, the ultimate, Tony Omi of Black Sabbath, someone who can make grown men cry, but also likes making everyone laugh. Like, he's a notorious prankster. If you want to listen to some pretty ridiculous stories, you can check out my extended podcast interview with his longtime engineer, Mike Exeter. It will make you think we're not worthy a bunch of times, but that's a side note. This particular story hails from the one year that uh, Ian Gillen of Deep Purple uh, sang with Black Sabbath. They made a record. Craziest year I've ever had in my life. Yeah. The longest party I've ever been to. <laughs> Probably the best laugh we've had. You know, enjoyable. They apparently got up to all sorts of crazy business, not less this explosive moment. Uh, even being blown up, I enjoyed that too. <laughs> <laughs> You're blown up. Yeah. yeah, they got a bicycle pump and blew me up. <laughs> no, it was dynamite actually. Yeah, we. Um, he used to stay in this, what, marquee or tent or whatever. It was a big, tent. <laughs> big tent. And um, we had this pyro that we used to have um, on stage. And we had all this pyro left, so when he went to bed, we decided to put it around his, bury it around the, the, the tent. And um, they put too much in, to be honest, and it, and it, it, let it off. And the, his, his tent just took off. <laughs> and it just was there. So it was like um, we overdone it a bit. Plus, also, we were recording at the Manor, which was Richard Branson's place. And he had a carp, were they? Um, uh, carp. The, the carp. Mm. The big expensive yeah, ones. Yes, the expensive ones. And, and all the concussion from the bomb went through the, the lake, and all the fish can float, well, a lot of the fish would come float into the top, stunned or dead. So it, it really backfired that <laughs> Tony is completely up for the wind-up. I mean, it's funny. He says, um, I mean, uh, Ozzy lives for it as well. Ozzy will try to make those guys laugh on stage. Yeah. He will try to get them cracking up. And you see it in all the movies and yeah. uh, every night on stage. He he just does a look and you see Tony trying to concentrate and he's suddenly doubled up trying to play a very majestic guitar solo. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but that's what they're like. It's it's like everybody gets the job done, but if you can't have a laugh doing it, what's the point? You yeah. Know? Next up, we have Chuck Billy and Alex Skolnick of Testament talking about a few ways Motorhead made their 40 years on the road a little more interesting. Right in the middle of our show, we have a break in the set and here comes Phil driving out on a horse and a dress and a wig. <laughs> and there's Lemmy pushing a broom behind him, sweeping up the horse crap. And, and uh, Mickey D's in the front of the horse, dressed up in a poncho and riding a horse as well. And uh, Phil had the Lawrence of Arabia thing going, so it was like a camel. In the morning of the show, when they got to the production office, the request for the rider was just like, they've never heard it. It's like, I need a horse. I need, you know. And they, it wasn't just us, like what they did to Sabbath was, they bought a thousand newspapers. So when Sabbath hit the stage, at the whole two, three, four rows had newspapers. Like they weren't watching. The best part of the story was that the tour manager who actually found the horse for Motorhead contacted me when we first aired this and uh, said it was basically the best day of her life. So I just love that this is the world that we inhabit. I mean, I, like you, miss this world deeply. And when we all get to get back together again, I don't think we're all going to let go ever again. Um, but that's another story. Let's get through it with some laughs. Uh, next up, we have a story that I didn't even know was true. Um, we've got Andy Gill of Gang of Four, who's a legendary guitarist and record producer, actually died not that many months ago. Um, yeah, just, he made a real mark, man. That Killing Joke album he did, um, I think it was like last year or the year before, just so, so good. Um, but yeah, he made Flea and Anthony Kiedis' first record, the first Chili Peppers record. And at the time, they didn't really get along because like Flea and Anthony and early Chili Peppers, like I love early Chili Peppers, were like dirty and disgusting and running around and, you know, like just wild and everything that's great about stupid, ridiculous young men. Um, and Andy Gill is all very angular and clean and precise and not not strong, but... They apparently didn't get along and they expressed that in a very specific way. I was producing the Red Hot Chili Peppers yeah. and I was mixing um, their album and uh, Flea and, uh, what's his face, um, Swan, uh, what's his name? A Swan, Anthony. Swan. Anthony, Anthony used to be called Swan. 
Yeah. So it was Flea and Swan. And um, they came in and they, list, they listened to it and they said, um, oh, we're going to go to the uh, toilet and take a shit. And I, without thinking, I said, oh, that's fantastic. Bring me one back. And then as soon as I said that, I just thought, you f- absolute <laughs> moron. Why did you say that? And then um, five minutes later, the door opened and then Flea came in with a pizza tray covered in steaming odeur and placed it on the mixing desk. And of course, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming, but the engineer had no clue. <laughs> so there he is, like, you know, and then there's this pile, and he literally ran screaming from the studio. And he was last seen running down <laughs> Sunset Avenue. You know. Did you ever work with him again? No. And last but not least, I bring you a moment. It wasn't really a prank, less I guess a moment, a very weird Australian band not only freaked out Odorous Arungus of Gua and Dave Brocky, who inhabits the Odorous costume, I think it would be pretty hard to uh, unsettle, they did, and also proved that in some instances, Lubricated Goat is not just a clever name. I apologize to my fellow vegans. The most incredible fucked up thing I've ever seen in the history of fucking rock and roll. I was in San Francisco and it was actually a band from Australia called Lubricated Goat. Do you remember that band? You don't remember that band? They took a fucking dead goat and they put it in a freezer for about three weeks until it was frozen to fuck solid. They brought it out on stage and they hit it with a sledgehammer and that thing broke apart like a piece of glass. Thanks very much for watching tonight's episode. I'll be delving deep into the archives, lots more over coming days, weeks, months. And you can also check out our extended show on Fridays with my good friend Josh, where we get deeper. Be excellent to each other. Thank you for watching the whole video. It's really great to see you at the end. You came all the way through with me to the end. If you've enjoyed the content today and you'd like to catch more of it forever, make more of it happen, um, I would very much appreciate you subscribing. Also, there are many more videos here and here.